Hi there everyone, welcome back to another video review and here with me I have the OnePlus 5 which is a performance piece with a price tag lower than many of the competitors out there like the likes of Google, Samsung and Apple but with a price increase from the OnePlus 3 from last year. So I've been using this phone for a little over a month now since I got it on June 23rd. So let's dive in and let me show you what I like and don't like about the OnePlus 5. Let's begin with the build quality. The phone has a unibody design and even though the phone is tight shut it doesn't have an IP rating certification meaning it is not dust or water resistant. This is not an issue for me since I don't carry my phone near water as often or at all. This however may be an issue for you if you need it because your work requires you to work near water or if you want it because you like to share it with your phone, no judgment here, or if you like to take underwater pictures at the pool. If that's the case then you will be utterly disappointed with this lack of waterproofing. The back of the phone feels great with its curved anodized aluminum. The phone is very slippery and a fingerprint magnet but it's nothing a full on skin that can add character to your phone, a bumper case that protects the edges, or a case that may add some bulk cannot fix. Unless you like to carry your phone in its birthday suit then you will have to be careful when handling it. The phone comes in two color options, the slate gray which I have here and this one has 6 gigs of RAM or the midnight black which is bundled with 8 gigs of RAM so not much of a color option there. You can only get two shades of the same color, one just slightly lighter than the other. And I tweeted out to OnePlus about any other colors being released and the OnePlus support team said that they had no information to give out on that. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. The OnePlus 5 has a blazing fast fingerprint reader that is consistent. It has a bottom firing mono speaker, nothing special there, a USB Type-C, and a headphone jack which is special nowadays. It also comes with something neat, an alert slider. This is very useful, you can easily silence your phone with a slider without having to look at your phone. I still wish that there was a complete silent mode, like also silencing the touchpad feedback because there's still vibrations when typing even after turning it off on the silent setting. In a very quiet room you can hear that vibration going off, so it would have been nice if you can also silence the touchpad feedback. One thing that could have made the experience much better is if they used a Quad HD AMOLED display. The 1080p display is good and since it is using an AMOLED panel you get the rich inky blacks and the colors look more vibrant than they do on most LCD screens. You can also adjust the screen color calibration so you can choose a preset one that's given there or you can also select the custom one and adjust it to your liking there. The screen also manages to get bright enough to see outdoors and it gets very dim for night usage. It also has a night mode so that's good for you night owls out there and it also has a reading mode which makes the screen black and white which is a neat addition. So the thing I like most about this phone is just how smooth everything is. If you guys use Snapchat on Android, you know just how laggy it can be after months of using it. But on the OnePlus 5 there is no lag whatsoever and that's very satisfying. As some of you may know, I am not a big gamer and don't really spend much time playing games on my phone. The games I do play is Dead Trigger and Unkill which I am playing right here. This is a fun game and besides the story mode you can also have a one on one match online. So that's awesome. The phone doesn't get hot at all and it does get suddenly warm after playing for a few hours. This handles just about any game you can throw at it without breaking a sweat. So that's awesome. I also play S4 8 on here and this is a good game to pass the time here and there. And this is by far one of the smoothest phones out there in terms of how well it can handle everyday tasks. The fluidity is just amazing. And the animation speed is pretty fast and they are set to normal one time speed and I thought they were like on .5 or something because of how fast it was. So overall this has been great and I haven't noticed any jelly effect on my unit display so that's good. Another thing I like is the clean Android experience. It is running Android 7.1.1 at the moment and it has the Oxygen 4.5.6 on top of that but it is a near to stock Android experience. I like the additions that Oxygen OS brings like being able to change themes to an all black or an all white one and being able to change the accents colors as well. There are a couple of colors you can choose from and I switch between most of them so you can see how that looks. You can only change the accent color when you have the black or white theme applied and not on the default theme. So this adds a bit of character to your phone and just makes it feel a bit more personal which I really like. You can also customize the color of the LED notification light. Something worth noting though is that if you choose any color for the notification light to light up when it is charging like orange, green, purple, just to name a few, it will always light up blue because that's the color for dash charging. When you connect it to a non-dash charger it will light up the color you assigned it to. Then there are the gestures you can do on the display when the screen is off. You can assign a gesture to any app to launch automatically after you draw on the display. You can also control the music from the off screen by drawing on the display. And you can also set an automatic power on and off schedule so it can turn off before you go to bed and power on to sound your alarm. That's a neat feature but if it fails to power on you might just be late to work or class. I haven't really used that only 4 times to test that out and it worked for those 4 times but you'll have to completely trust it that it will turn back on. If you have been using that feature daily, let us know how that has been working out for you. Something that I don't like about the phone is that you can only use the hot word OK Google when the phone screen is on whether it be on the lock screen or any other screen. 
I'm my LG V20 and Nexus 6P, I could use the hot word OK Google from the off screen and it will automatically launch the Google Assistant. The option to launch the Google Assistant from the off screen is there on the OnePlus 5 but it doesn't work. On the OnePlus 3 you can launch it when it is charging but on the OnePlus 5 you can't do either and I find that a bit annoying. Okay, Google. That's something I use a lot for setting reminders, timers, alarms, putting events on my calendar and looking up information quickly without having to use my hands. Okay, Google. And I also use it a lot in my car for navigation commands. Okay Google. Hi. Now onto the battery. Another thing to love about this phone is the dash charging. It takes about 30 minutes to get from 0 to 60% and about 1 hour and 20 minutes to go from empty to full. The phone has a built in 3300mAh battery and the battery life is decent. It lasts me from 9am to 11pm depending on how much I use it that day. But that is about the average battery life I'm getting. I like to keep my Bluetooth on all the time because I use a smartwatch and I also keep my location on all the time as well as the NFC because of Android Pay. This is all just for convenience. But with all these services turned on all day and with my moderate usage which consists of replying to emails, text messages, watching videos, reading articles and browsing the web, and standby, it lasts me my full day. So that's good. So because I keep my Bluetooth on all the time, I found an issue with the Bluetooth. It turns off on its own randomly which I find very annoying. So I hope they fix that very soon. The OnePlus 5 is running the latest Bluetooth 5.0 and the OnePlus 5 lets you change the auto codec on your phone to aptx or aptx hd which is supposed to provide better audio quality to your bluetooth headphones so it is supposed to sound better but with all the headphones i tried which have the aptx audio codec on them it still sounded the same as any other phone using bluetooth and the sound actually sounded lower on the oneplus 5 using bluetooth than on other phones i connected to my headphones there is clarity i just have to increase the volume a lot on my oneplus 5 so if you have the same issue let us know in the comment section below now onto the camera you can quickly launch your camera by double pressing the power button when the screen is off or on. If you have Snapchat on your phone and it's your first time double pressing the power button when the screen is on, it will ask what camera you want it to launch and you can set it to launch Snapchat. But only when the screen is on, otherwise it will just launch your camera app when the screen is off. The camera is good, but not the best out there. It takes clear pictures during the day and it's pretty good in low light, but there is noticeable noise in each picture when you look closely at it. I often get a blurry picture when I don't use flash and it takes a couple of shots to get a good one. There's also a pro mode for those who know what they're doing with the camera, which doesn't include me. It gives you manual control over exposure, shutter speed, ISO, and so on. The secondary camera gives you a 2 times lossless zoom, which is good for getting closer pictures without having to walk closer to your subject. You will need to have good lighting because else it will just use your main camera and use digital zoom. It doesn't tell you when it's using the main camera and using digital zoom or if it's using the secondary camera. So hopefully they do an update to let you know, so keep note of that. Then there is portrait mode where it uses both cameras to achieve a bokeh effect where it blurs the background and keeps your subject in focus. Sometimes you get a good shot and sometimes you don't. It also depends on the lighting condition. I found that it works well often when I take pictures outdoors. The front facing camera has a 60 megapixel sensor and it produces some clear and sharp images for a front camera. So that's good for those who like taking selfies and it also records in 1080p. The rear main camera video recording is good. You can record up to 4K at 30 frames per second but it lacks optical image stabilization. You do get electronic image stabilization when you record on 1080p. So here I'll leave you with this video that I recorded on my OnePlus 5 so you can see how well it does in low light. And sorry about there being no audio, it's so I don't get copyrighted because they were playing music. I also put up a few pictures for your reference. They are all non-edited and taken with the OnePlus 5. So I'll be going now and thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video. Enjoy!